What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining me for another episode of Quarantine Kitchen. Today's episode is very special, and we have a we have a surprise guest, something never before seen on Quarantine Kitchen. Today we're cooking with ground beef. Now stop before all my vegan and vegetarian viewers run off. I haven't I haven't completely gone back over the fold. I always said I was a flexitarian. Um, but I want a taste of home and I couldn't come up with a better substitute than ground beef for this one. However, you can use lentils, you can use tofu, you can use ground mints, uh, the substitute, the soy protein, you can use walnut meat. There's a million options that you can use, but today I'm using ground beef. Don't hate me, that's just the way it is today. And we are going to be making sloppy joe bowls and I'm very excited about this. So let's get started. We've got a wide variety of ingredients today, uh, but the three main components of the dish, it's going to be uh, squash. I have no idea what kind of squash this is. I believe it's acorn, but I'm actually not sure. Um, so I'm going to be using squash, a full head of broccoli, and a pound of ground mints. This is going to meet the book. This is going to make four portions of a sloppy joe bowl, so I'll be eating it for a couple of days. Um, in addition to that, got all my seasonings here that you can't see. Marinara sauce, tomato paste, mustard, a red onion, garlic, paprika, hot sauce, soy sauce, Worcestershire sauce, sea salt, apple cider vinegar, and crushed red pepper. So there's a lot of things going on. The very first thing, the first part of the component is going to be the squash. We're going to get it cut up and seasoned and we're going to put it in the oven to bake. Um, you can use any squash for this. It actually recommends spaghetti squash in the original recipe, but we don't have that here. <laughs> I've never tried one so I have no idea. So instead I'm just going to be using chunks of regular squash which will be just this fine squash, tastes like squash. So first step is to cut this. Um, and I'm going to dice it. So I'm going to make small dices and put it on my tray to bake. And we're gonna go ahead and get that started once I find my cutting board and a knife. So super excited about this meal. I've been doing really well with fewer grains. That's been the newest um, change. I've been trying to cut out most of the grains that I eat. I still eat um, rice occasionally and oat occasionally, usually only in dessert though. Um, but I'm trying to cut that out as well. These would be amazing seeds to save if you were inclined to going through all the dehydration process to make them edible. Or if you're a gardener and you want to grow your own squash. This looks so much like a cantaloupe, it's not funny. Oh. Here, look at my kitchen while I bend over. La, 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 la. Oh, that wasn't good. This spoon is not dedicated to this job. I'm just saying, this is a lack of effort on the spoons. Oh, wait, this is a pumpkin, not a cantaloupe. That's why it feels like it's really hard to do. Oh my gosh, I now have seed pulled all over my kitchen. This is fun. I enjoy this. I don't know if anyone's ever said it, but I swear 60% of cooking is cleaning up after myself. That's fun. Oh. Try not to step in the pulp that is now all over my kitchen floor. I need a bigger trash can. That's the answer to that question. Um, you can't see what I'm doing, which is probably a good thing, because I'm not very good at this. I have no knife skills whatsoever in terms of being a chef. None. Zero. I mean, con I consider it skill if I manage not to cut myself. That's, that's about the extent of the skill. For the record, this is a very dense squash, so while you're out there making fun of me, um, it's kind of like that sweet potato. We grow some hearty vegetables here in Brazil. The vegetables are dedicated, the utensils not so much. Okay, so there's one part. 
Check it out. It's definitely a squash, not a cantaloupe, guys. In case you couldn't tell. Um, if you are using a non-stick pan to bake your squash on, I would recommend oiling the pan first. I'm not going to because I'm trying very hard to avoid oils. Um, and also this is a non-stick pan. That's almost outlived its usefulness. It's starting to rust. So it may be time to graduate up the food chain and go back to my silicone pans. I'm, I'm just making a mess here, guys. You can't see it, but it's pretty bad. Cut off the can. Good. Delicious. This is unnecessary, Mother Nature. Holy crow. I, people couldn't have naturally eaten squash. Like, what did they use? A rock? Reminds me of that scene in Castaway where he's trying to break open the coconut. And it's like, good heavens, I feel like Mother Nature went a little overboard with the coconuttiness. The security of the coconut. Whew, that was almost dangerous. However, if you ever need a natural weapon, Brazilian vegetables got your back. Like, you should be hucking full on vegetables ah! at each other. Do not try to learn any knife skills from me whatsoever. Go to someone that knows what they're doing. I am not a chef. I am a at-home cook. I like my own food. However, I have no knife skills. There's ways to do this, and I've tried, and I've failed miserably. So I'm just saying, if you're out there going, ooh, that looks easy, no, don't do it. It's unsafe. You will lose a finger. Just... I feel like that, uh, that disclaimer needs to be said. And it's not my knives either. These knives are actually really sharp. I know, because I've cut myself on them. Just good. this, like, Oh, I'm gonna, it's okay. I'm gonna put this in the oven and then I'm gonna clean my floor before we come back for the broccoli. So we're gonna do it in the order of the meat being the last thing that we start cooking, um, just because it, it's something that requires attention the entire time. Whereas the squash is gonna go in the oven and I'm gonna ignore it. And the uh, broccoli is just gonna be steamed with a little bit of seasoning, so. Spread this out on the pan. I'm going to season this with a very basic salty herb salt. I don't have anything more spectacular to say about that. Uh, I have this garlic, onion, and salsa mix. I don't know. But I'm literally just going to sprinkle some seasonings over this. I'm looking for a pure flavor in the, in the fruit, in the squash. So I don't want to over-season, and that's okay. So I say as I dump an entire spoonful in one section, we're going to mix it up in a bowl. I don't want to over-season. Blunk. Yeah, that's about how it works in my kitchen. All right, and then we're gonna put a little salt on it, and then we're gonna bake it in the oven at about 350 for about 35 minutes, 400 for 35 minutes, um, or until four, ten, until it's done. You know the scientific terms and all that. Um, and that's what we're gonna do now. So I'm gonna put these in the oven. Um, I'm gonna clean my floor, and we'll be right back to make another mess. Okay, crisis averted. I can now stand properly on the floor. Squash is in the oven. And we are going to steam this head of broccoli. So I'm going to break it up into smaller florets, put it in the colander, and try to steam it. I'm afraid I'm going to have to do it into two batches. Um, so be it. <laughs> so uh, in case you've never done this, you can, in fact, eat the stem of broccoli. Um, I, I, I do not, 
but we can. It is a possibility. And there are people better than me that do. Actually, that's a good place to start. And I'm just going to have it and stick it in the big old piece of broccoli. <laughs> now, honestly, the best way to steam broccoli is to have an even layer so that the steam can fully encompass each piece and it cooks it evenly, but I'm not proper. I'm just trying to have dinner and I ain't got time for all that. So, anyway, I'm putting it all in the colander at one time. It'll be uneven, it'll be full. I'm gonna shove a lid on it and hopefully it cooks. Like, really, that's how it's going to work. I know who I am. I know what I am. There's no denial here. Do, do, do. It's been a while since I've recorded. Nothing new has happened. We've been in quarantine. For real. Nothing. Nothing new. Nothing. Like, nothing. Mm -hmm. I've still got a lot of broccoli to go, and that colander is full. So like I said, this is how we're going to rock it. We're going to fill it up. We're going to cover it with a lid and hope it cooks, like how everybody does in the world. There's right ways and wrong ways. I'm not, a, I'm not, I already said it once, the disclaimer, I'm not a chef. So what you see is what you get. I am unashamed. Um, you can season before you steam. I'm going to season after I steam. So it's literally just broccoli in the colander right now. See, there you go. And to steam, I'm going to fill up this about enough water so that it doesn't soak the bottom of this. And then we're going to set it up like that, put a lid on it, and let it steam. That's how that works. So it's okay to touch the bottom of the colander, but you don't want it to soak through the colander, really. Because then it's not steaming, it's boiling, and that's all a matter of how you feel about boiled broccoli. So... Anywho, that goes on the stove with its lid, and that's ready to steam. So now the next part is preparing the sauce. Fortunately, the next part's pretty easy. Um, so while everything else is cooking, broccoli is steaming, uh, squash is in the oven. Don't forget to check on it occasionally because it may burn. Um, I'm going to prepare the meat. So I'm going to chop up this red onion. and I'm going to saute it with a little bit of garlic. You can use oil, I am not going to. I'm going to water saute, which means exactly what it sounds. Ah! Um, which is exactly what it sounds like. Let's do a little sucker. This is why I don't use red onions. They're dangerous. This knife sucks, what is happening? I almost cut my finger off, guys. Like, on camera, I literally just almost cut my finger off. I don't know why my knife wasn't cutting. I'll have to sharpen it. So maybe it was the knife with the squash. That's very possible. This is much better. That wasn't, it wasn't gripping? I don't know. Your knives have to be sharpened every now and then, otherwise they just don't work. Happens. Especially when you use them quite often, which I do. So anyway, we're dicing the onion. I'm just, I'm just not, it's not working today. Just slipping all over the place. Ah! I have no idea how much food has fallen on the other side of that counter. Uh, I just feel like that needs to be said. Okay. So far, so good. All right, that's better. Don't. I can feel you. Slip, what? Ugh, slippery little onion. It's a slippery onion. Just trying to kill me. He doesn't like my fingers. For the record, I didn't cut myself, but I almost did. All right, thankfully that's the last thing we have to cut tonight because everything else is already cut. Um, so we are going to saute the onion uh, with a little bit of water and garlic. Then we're going to brown the hamburger. Um, I hope you know how to do that. If you don't, you put the raw stuff in the pan and you mix it over heat until it's not raw. Professional terms. I could be a cookie teacher. 
He'd be Gordon Ramsay to hire me. I'd be a riot in this kitchen. I'm totally kidding. Please don't hire me. I don't want the stress of working in your kitchen. There's a reason I'm not a professional. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to saute so I'm going to saute these until they are tender. Then I'm going to put in the mince and cook it until it is browned. Then I will come back and we will add in the rest of the ingredients together. All right, it is fully browned and cooked through. So now we're going to add in all of the other ingredients and bring it to a boil, turn the heat down and let it simmer. So let's start adding ingredients. So we already have the red onion. We're gonna add in tomato paste and the marinara sauce. Pasta sauce is what Americans call it. It's only marinara if you're dipping breadsticks in it. Tell me I'm wrong. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it is two thirds of a cup. This is way more than two thirds of a cup, but I'm a saucy person. I'm actually afraid that that's not going to taste very good. Sometimes Brazilian sauces are in fact a hit or miss um, in terms of flavor. Sometimes it's like, oh, that's really good. That tastes very much like what I'm used to. Other times you're like, who picked the tomatoes for this? Like, what is wrong with you? Okay. And it's only one tablespoon of tomato paste. Um, and I'm going to put this into a jar here. So there are, is our tablespoon. Do, do, do. All right, uh, more garlic, but I've already put the garlic in, that's why. Okay, now, quarter cup soy sauce. Holy crow, that's a lot of soy sauce. That's a lot of soy sauce. That's what it says, all right. Can you say sodium? Actually, if you buy the low sodium, it's not as bad. If you use coconut aminos, it's even better. Um, I'm going to put in some of the English sauce. No particular amount. Okay, now we're doing a tablespoon of yellow mustard. Try to use up this container. Actually, the mustard here is fine. It's the mayonnaise that desperately needs help. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ah! Guys, I can't be let out of the house. Like, this is a brand new shirt, too. It's the reason I wore black and not gray, because I knew I was going to spill stuff on Yes, there's planning that goes into my pajamas. Put on your pajamas like, hmm, what am I making today that I could possibly spill on my shirt? Because we know we're going to spill it. It's just a matter of, you know, when and where. Uh, one teaspoon of chili powder. I'm going to be using paprika, because that's what we have. I'm going to be using a little more than a teaspoon. Then we have a half teaspoon of sea salt. I don't think I'm going to put salt in that, actually. Change of mind, because of the amount of soy sauce that's in it. So I'm not putting salt in it. One tablespoon of hot sauce. Because I don't like my food really salty. I actually don't do well with salty food. It makes me sick. Uh, one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. And then a quarter teaspoon of crushed red pepper. Okay, now we are going to mix this all together because that's what you do. Ah! I haven't touched butter today. Um, so I don't know. Well, I have no idea what's happening with all. All right, so we're gonna mix and we're gonna put this on um, over the heat until it boils. Then after it has boiled, we'll reduce it down to simmering and it's gonna simmer until we're ready to serve. And then in the meantime, make sure you're checking your squash because as soon as that's done, it'll be ready. Then the only step left is to season the broccoli. Um, and I'm gonna wait for it to finish steaming, which it's almost finished. Um, and then we'll be ready to serve. So I'll be back when the broccoli is finished. All right, look at this, check this out. Whoa, yeah. I think it's steamed. And you can tell by how pretty green it is. It's very pretty green. All right, so we're gonna season the broccoli. You can do this however you would like. My favorite way to season steamed broccoli 
is with a little bit of lemon and my lemon herbs that I got from Jardin de Gros, the store, the awesome store as I call it, near here. So I'm going to use the juice of one lemon. I keep calling it a lemon. It's the same word in Portuguese, limo. It means lemon or lime. Um, so I'm going to use one lime to cover all of it, and then I'm going to mix it together with the herbs. And then next up will be plating, and then dinner will be ready. And I'm very excited about this. Ow. Scientific measurements right there. All my spoons are not where I need them to be. So then we're really just going to mix this together. And I'll put the lid on it till it's hot. The squash is almost finished, but not quite. Um, so we're going to give that a few more minutes. And then as soon as the squash is finished, um, we're going to plate it. And I'll be back when that's ready. The squash is already seasoned. The broccoli is ready for portioning. Look at that. Fit perfectly. Um, the meat is on to simmer, so we're waiting for the squash, and then I will plate, and then I'll come back on camera. All right, here it is, beautiful and plated, pretty colors. It looks really good. It smells even better. I don't know if this is a spork, a spork, a fork or a spoon, but I feel like I should have a spork with this, but we are going to just dig in for the taste test here, and I'm going to mix a bite of squash with the meat. I chose a good squash because the acorn squash is not overpowering like pumpkin or butternut has a tendency to be. Um, but it gives almost the feel of a bun. Um, and the meat came out perfect. Um, I did not not add salt and I was right to do that. Um, because I think it's perfectly salty. Uh, I'm excited to go eat this, and I'm going to go, like, shove it in my face. So, everybody, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Thank you so much for supporting me and being a part of my channel. Um, if you have suggestions for recipes, please leave them down in the comments. It doesn't matter how outlandish or strange, I will try them on my channel because this is what I love to do. So thank you guys so much, and happy cooking.